And uh, hey, God's good, isn't he? If you have your Bibles this morning, if you'll turn with me to the book of Jonah. We're going to look at a couple of things over there. At some point, I'm going to start Zechariah. It's going to take a lot of studying, and I have not had the proper time to study that out beforehand before I go into it. And y'all pray for me about that because there's a lot in Zechariah. Uh, it's got prophecy in it, and it's uh, relevant to today of what's going on over in Israel. And I can tell you, I'll just go ahead and tell you, if you don't know this, you need to stand with Israel because God said, I'll bless those who bless you and I'll curse those who curse you. Now, how many of you here want to be under a curse? I can tell you that's exactly what you'll be if you're not for Israel. And, I, and that, hey, that's Bible right there. And uh, I, I know what's going on. I, I, know, I see all the nations against Israel, but they're not going to defeat Israel. I can just tell you. They've tried it before. They got down to old Gideon. Old Gideon, he had 10,000 ready to go to battle, and God made him trim it down to 300 And because uh, God fights those battles for them. And uh, I can tell you, they're going to win. You just stay on the winning side. I, I, if I go to a ball game, I, wanna, I want my team to win, don't you? And uh, the winning side will be Israel. And uh, I hope they put that, publicize that out on YouTube where everybody get a little break of that today. They need to understand that. But in the book of Jonah this morning, if you'll look with me in, in chapter 1, I'm going to read the first chapter, and we're going to look at a few things in verse 1. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amit, Amitahi, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh. That great city, it's not, not only great in people, but it was great in, in wickedness. And, and uh, anyways, anyway, that great city and cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa, and he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in, in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. Then the mariners were afraid, and they cried every man into his God, and cast forth the wires or the cargo that were in the ship into the sea to lighten it, to lighten it of them. But Jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship, and he lay, and he was fast asleep. So the shipmaster came to him and said unto him, What meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise, call upon thy God, if so be that God will think upon us and we, that we perish not. And they said every one to his fellow, Come and let us cast lots, that we may know for whose cause this evil is upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell upon Jonah. Then said they unto him, Tell us, we pray thee, for whose cause this evil is upon us? What is thy occupation, and whence they come from? And what is thy country, and what people are, art thou? And he said unto them, I, I am a Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, which has made the sea and the dry land. Then were the men exceedingly afraid, and said unto him, Why hast thou done this? For the... For the men knew that he had fled from the presence of the Lord, because he had told them. Then said they unto him, What shall we do unto thee, that the sea may be calm unto us? For the sea was wrought and was tempestuous. And he said unto them, Take me up, and cast me forth into the sea, so shall the sea be calm unto you. For I know that for my sake this great tempest is upon you. Nevertheless, the men rowed hard to bring it to the land, but they could not, for the sea for the sea wrought and was temptuous against them. Wherefore they cried unto the Lord and said, We beseech you, O Lord, we beseech thee, let us not perish for this man's life, and lay not upon us innocent blood, for thou, O Lord, hast done as it has pleased thee. So they took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea, and the sea ceased from her raging. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice unto the Lord, and he made vows. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days 
in three nights. I want to invite you to pray with me. Lord, we come to you thanking you, Lord, for your kindness and goodness. Lord, we always thank you for your amazing grace. Thank you, Lord, that we're not followers of the law, Lord, but we're, we're under your grace today. And maybe there's someone here today that trying to work their way to heaven. Maybe they're trying to be good and gain merit from you. And Lord, maybe they're looking at the things that they shouldn't be looking at that, that, should, that, that saves them. But Lord, help them to look to you and your cross and what you did upon the cruel cross of Calvary and your blood that was shed upon that cross. And help them to look at that today and be saved by your grace through faith. And today, Lord, I ask you, Lord, to sit down with us and make your way simple through the power of your word and make your way right through the, through the power of your word today. And I pray for, for, for those that are taking care of our children. We, don't, we never want to... We never want to come together and not thank you for what you're doing in the children's ministry. And for those that take care of our children, I pray for a special blessing upon them and be with our youth tonight. I pray, Lord, that this will be a church that will be on a hot trail to a lost and dying world. I pray that this will be a church of discipleship that will take time to disciple each other. And, Lord, that our Sunday schools will be strong or small groups those things will be strong. Our Bible studies will be strong. Be strong in you. And Lord, where we can live out our faith on a daily basis. And Lord, today I ask you just to sit down with us. Thank you for what you did last week. We ask you, Lord, to continue to move and work in the hearts and lives of your people. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. I want you to look at a few things this morning as we look into the Word of God. And I want you to see how Jonah is. I want you to see who he is. I want you to see his personality. I know I've preached through Jonah before and we've had a good time preaching through that book, but I want you to see something that I've never brought up before. I want you to see a man that God called into the ministry that was a prophet. I want you to see a man that God sent to the Assyrians. The Assyrians were total enemies of Israel. As a matter of fact, the Assyrian people were very brutal. And whenever they would win a war, they would re they, even after they won it, they, they would be brutal about it. And they would, they would cut people and they would cut off heads and they, they would do a lot of things to torture people even after the fact. And they were a brutal people. And we got those living with us today, maybe not in this nation, but they're, they're across the world today. They think nothing about cutting off your head. They think it's all for the name of, uh, of their God. But I can tell you the Assyrians were a crude people, and they were violent. As a matter of fact, they would fillet the skin. They would fillet the skin of an Israelite, and they would stretch him from stake to stake and let him, and let him lay out in the sun until, he, until his death came. There was a lot of brutality on the Assyrians. And they were great enemies of the Israelite people, the Hebrew people. And Jonah was of the Hebrew people. And he, uh, Jonah hated the, the Assyrians. And you need to understand that today, why he, he did not want to go to Tarshish. And he ran from his call to do that. He did not want to see those people come to Christ. He wanted to see those people dead. That's what he wanted. And I can tell you, anger, and anger is not good in ministry. And anger and hate for people are not good for the ministry. And God has a plan for everybody's life. See, what we do when God saves us, we forget who we used to be. We forget what we were and what, what we are. And we just we, we kind of put ourselves on a pedestal that God has saved us and we live by grace and all those things are taken care of. But that's wrong today. People are people all over the world. And God wants to save people. And I can tell you, I'm going to go ahead and break the news to you this morning. The Democratic Party is not going to bring this nation to where it needs to be. The Republican Party is not going to bring this nation to where it can be. You may be a Trump fan. You may be a Chameleon Harris fan or whatever you may be today. But I can tell you those are just people and they're not going to bring this nation to where God wants it. You're going to have to allow Jesus Christ to be, have, 
have control of this nation if you want this nation to be straightened out. If you don't see this nation being needing to be straightened out, then you're living under a rock. That's all I can tell you. Because we're heading right into socialism. We're heading right into dictatorship, and you can't see it. All right, if you don't change the channel, turn off the channel, start praying, you're going you're gonna to wind up. Your grandkids and our great-grandkids will have to bear the load of what you voted for this time. And you need to understand that today. But I can tell you, politics won't change what God wants to change. It's only going to take Jesus Christ to change it. And if he can change the Assyrians, he can change, the, he can change any, anybody. Somebody say amen to that. And I want you to see four things today if we have time. Number one today, anger and hate for people make us, makes us flee from the presence of the Lord. Look down with me in the first three verses. It says this, Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of, the son of Amatei, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city. It was only great in wickedness, and it was great in stench also. And, and cry against it. For their wickedness has come up before me. You think God, you think we have wickedness that has come up before God today? In the day and age that we live, that a one party would run on being, being able to have to have an abortion and kill a child for a woman? You think God's happy with that today? I tell you, you're badly fooled. And I can tell you today that it, 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 what's wrong with the heart of the nation is what's wrong with the heart of the world. We're corrupt and we're evil in heart. And we see things that are evil as good and good as evil. And those things have rose up before the Lord. And I can tell you today that things are not going to get easier whenever you're heading in the wrong direction. If you want things to get easier, you better start praying and you better start drawing near to the Lord and letting the Lord take care of some things. And look down with me, he says, but Jonah, here's what he did. He must have been a Baptist. He rose up and fled from Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. That's what happens here. You see people come in, God grabs a hold of them, uh, grabs a hold because of their sin, and he wants to save them by his grace and forgive them of their sin, but they don't want to come out of sin. And the thing they do, they flee from the presence of the Lord never to come back again and say, I don't want to go out, I don't want to hear that preacher, he intimidates me. And I can tell you it's the word of God that intimidates you. It's the word of God that will change your life. But you can't reject the word of God. Every time you reject it, you're running from, you're fleeing from the presence of the Lord. And that's what Jonah did. He hated the Assyrians. He was hateful. He, he was miserable. He was not happy in his life because God had called him to go to Assyria and, or, or and to Tarshish. And, and, and here he is. Here he is being from the presence of the Lord. He runs from the presence of the Lord. I love the presence of the Lord. We need the presence of the Lord. And I want to live in the presence of the Lord. I don't want to live in this old world. I've lived in this world. It don't have anything to offer. It's here today and gone tomorrow. Whatever they offer you today will be a gone tomorrow. But I can tell you what Jesus will offer you. Living water will last you for the rest of your life. Once you drink that, you'll never have to drink anything else in the world. And he'll give you living water to, to satisfy your soul. That's called the grace of God for salvation from Jesus Christ. Look down with me. He said, he, 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 said he, he flee into Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them into Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. I can tell you the most miserable uh, person today is those that are out of the will of God. Amen. God has a will for their life, especially a preacher who's been called to preach and he's not preaching. And he's not, he's not, and, and, and God don't have a reason to call him to preach because he's not in the Word, he's not in prayer, and he's, he's, just, he's just living his life, and he's sold up, he's mad, and because he, God's not using him. Well, you got to draw near to God and let God draw near to you, and God will use you. He knows what's in you, and he'll use you if you let him. And we need to understand that today. And I can tell you that he fled, oh, old Jonah fled from the presence of the Lord. And he was miserable and he was angry and, and, and he, he was out of his presence. Look down with me in verse 10. He said, Then the men that were exceedingly afraid and said unto to Jonah, Why hast thou done this? 
For the men knew that he had fled from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. Now, I want you to see that today. That's a bad day when other people see you running from the grace of God, running from the presence of the Lord. And people see that. And whoever you surround yourself with, you, you, when you do that, you're, you're bringing them into your conflict. Your, your, your family, you bring them into your conflict. Your friends that are around, you bring them into your conflict because you're in conflict with the Lord running from His presence. Look down with me in verse 12. This will blow your mind. It says this, And He said unto them, Take me up and cast me forth into the sea so that the sea may be calm unto you. And He said, For I know that for my sake this great tempest is upon you. Listen, these, these mariners, were fight, they, they were fighting for their life. And they got a backslidden Baptist preacher that don't want to preach God's word to somebody because he hated them and he was miserable. And while he was running, he was bringing everybody else into conflict. Now, that's what happens in the day and age. It never changes. You know, it never changes. We got to understand that today. That whenever you're in conflict, it brings other people around you right into conflict. And what did he want to do? Just throw me overboard. Well, you're going to see it, through the scriptures four, three or four times. He, he said, it's better for me to die as, as do this. And I'm thinking to myself, when does a person want to die? It's because they're miserable because they're out of the will of God. Amen? And that's true today. And we need to understand that today because God has a will for everybody's life. If you've been saved by God's grace, if you have, and, and the Holy Spirit lives in you, then God has a purpose for your life. And he has, a, he has a roadmap for your life. And He wants you to be in that roadmap. And that roadmap is where you're going to find peace and joy. And that's where you're going to find victory in that roadmap of where He's got you. If you're with me this morning, say amen. And I want you to know that hate, hate, hate just won't fly, won't fly in the ministry. And I could just be like me saying, Keith, you need to go to Iran to start, 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 uh, start telling them to get right with me. I'm thinking, I ain't going to Iran. I don't like them. All right, I'm not going. I'm not going to go over with them hoochies or whatever they are, hooties. You know what? You know the in my home. I'm thinking, I want to kill them. See, y'all, see, we're, we've got a bunch of Jonas around us, don't we? I mean, don't you, don't you, don't you just think, yeah, mm. but you know what? That's not the way God wants it. He wants us to use the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ to win them to Him. Amen. And when God changed their hearts, that's going to change the nation. Amen. You know, I got a little, there's a, there's a, one of my, one of my uh, evangelist friends got invited to Palestine and got to preach, and 10,000 people got saved that day when he preached. Now, they, he said, you can't tell that because cause some of them were governors that got saved. Now, just think, 10,000 people got saved in Palestine from one guy that lives in Alabama. Now, I want to tell you something, church. God will change the world with one person. And you know what? We got to be willing to go. We got to be willing to see our neighbor. We got to be willing to love our neighbor. You know what's wrong with our nation today and our world today? We don't have God's love in our hearts. And without God's love, you're not going to win people. And I can tell you today that we need God's love in our heart. Number two today. I want to look over in chapter two because number two, anger and hate towards people. All that. I can tell you when you have anger and hurt around people that people are going to wound up hurt. Now look down with me in, verse, in chapter 2. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord, his, his God, out of the fish's belly. And he said, I cried by reason of my affliction unto the Lord, and he heard me, and out of the belly he cry, he, and out of the belly of hell cried I, and thou heardest my voice. 
For thou hast, hast cast me into the deep, in the midst of the seas, and the floods compassed me about, and thy billows and thy waves have passed over me. For I said, I am cast out of thy sight, yet will I look again towards the holy temple. Now what's he talking about there today? I want to tell you something. When, when you look at this, I want you to know that, that when you got hate towards people, when you have that, the Lord is in a place that he's going to make you hear him. Amen. Do you understand that today? Amen. If you're a child of God, God's going to, he's going to talk to you about that. And I hope he's talking to a lot of us today. Because the, the fields are white with harvest. But if you got hate in your heart, you're not going to go into the harvest. And you're not going to win people. And I want you to see today that he got his attention. He was, in, he was three days and three nights in the, in, in, the, in the fish's belly. Now, don't you know that smelled real good? Don't you know that was nasty? Don't you know that he was in a place he never, and what do you say? Hey, if I ever get out of here, I'm going to start praying towards the holy hills, towards Jerusalem. That's what we do. We start praying when we get ourselves in trouble. And we get ourselves in trouble. When did he get himself in trouble? When he ran from the presence of the Lord. Amen. And see, people get themselves in trouble, and that's when they start praying. You need to start praying way back yonder and, and seeing where God wants you in his life. Amen? Amen. You, you started too late. Oh, yes. And you say, Lord, I must have missed something here. I started praying too late, but if you'll get me out of this mess, I, I'm going to do what you tell me to do. Anybody ever pray like that? To see, what God wants is a personal relationship with you day by day. Amen. It's not just when you get in trouble. Oh, yes. It's not when things get tough. I tell you, things, things can get tough around you, and you might pray a little bit, but when something happens to you, you you're going to pray. Amen. I've never seen anybody that was an atheist that didn't get in a tough spot that they didn't well, try to pray. Amen? Amen. By the way, if you're an atheist today and you're sitting there like a knot on a log, mad, I'm going to tell you, you can live your life like that and you can be prideful and arrogant all the days of your life. And you can, and you can walk around with arrogance and just say you don't believe, but I want, to tell you, I want you to listen. Wherever death finds you, that's where eternity is going to keep you. There's no way to turn it around when you die. You better get that right today. And you better get the denomination out of your head and start going to Christ. Amen? Baptist won't get you to heaven. I, I, only reason I'm a Baptist is because you can trace it back to the, to the church of Jerusalem. You can trace it all the way back. Amen. And you can trace, the doctrine comes out of there is solid. That's the only reason I'm a Baptist. I'm a born again believer first. Amen. And I want to stay under the right doctrine. Amen. That's the only reason I'm a Baptist. Yes. But that Baptist is not going to do nothing for me. It's being born again that's going to save you. Amen. Amen. He told Nicodemus, you must be born, Jesus told, you must be born again, Nicodemus. Hey, Nicodemus was a preacher of the law. And he went to Jesus by night because he saw him do the miracles. He said, you've got to be from God Amen. to do the miracles that you do. He said, Nicodemus, you're a ruler of the Jews and you don't know these things. Unless you're born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Well, guess what? Old Nicodemus got born again. Amen. When he took Jesus off the cruel cross of Calvary. And he did, that on, he did that on Passover when you weren't supposed to handle any kind of blood whatsoever. He, him and Joseph of Arimathea took him off the cross. Two Jewish men took, took, defiled themselves because they had done giving their life to Christ. They defiled themselves according to Jewish, Jewish law. And they gave it all. And they, they followed Jesus. That's what Jesus wants. He wants us to give it all. He wants us to get out of that old world and get with him. I want you to see this third thing today. Anger and hate towards people makes us serve out of obligation and not love. Do y'all know that when you hate people and, you, and, you, and you're arrogant and, you, and, you, and you're miserable, did you know that you'll just serve? When you, if you've got a job to do in the church, you'll just do it out of obligation. Amen. Did you know that? You will. You won't do it out of a heart of love. Look down, look down with me in chapter 3. And the word of the Lord came into Jonah the second time. Now he's done praying and done trying to get himself right with the Lord. Now watch. 
He's fixing to do what God's going to tell him to do, but it's going to be re in a reluctant way. Amen. It's not going to be out of a heart of love. And he said, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto, and, and preach unto, and to it the preaching that I bid thee, I commanded thee. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city of three days' journey. And Jonah began to enter into the city a, a, a day's journey. It takes three days to walk through Nineveh. He's, he's walked a whole day's journey, and here's what he did. Here, here's his message. And he cried and said, Forty days, yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Amen. That's what God spoke through him. That's what he preached. Amen. So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them even to the least of them. And the word came to the king of Nineveh and he rose from his throne and he laid his robe from him and covered him with sackcloth and sat in ashes as a form of repentance as a, re as a repentant garment. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published throughout Nineveh the, the decree of the king, his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor beast nor herd nor flock taste anything. Let them not feed nor drink or water. That's an extreme fast. But let men, let man, beast, be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily unto God. Yea, let them turn everyone from his evil way. There's repentance. And from the violence that is in their hands. Who can tell if God will turn and relent and turn away from his fierce anger, the anger that we perish? And God saw their works, that they turned from their evil way, and God repented of their evil, and he said, unto, he said that he would do unto them, and he did not. God had mercy on them. Now, church, you look at that this morning, and you see what's going on, and you see chapter 3, you see that people... You, you see that anger and hate towards people makes us, make, makes us serve out of obligation, but God's still going to do his work. But you're still miserable. So what are you going to do about that? Jonah didn't, you know, I noticed Jonah done what God told him to. I think once or twice in the Gospels, Jesus used Jonah as a reference that the Son of Man will be in the earth as Jonah three days and three nights in the fish's belly. He used that terminology, but I've never seen him use Jonah anymore. Pretty alarming, isn't it? Wayward. Hated people. You know what? I get around people, they hate the church. They hate church people. You invite them to church, I ain't ever going back to church again. I had a bad experience there, da 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 you know what? If you kind of dig in and pull back the layers, they might have had a bad experience, Amen. but they might have been part of that experience Amen. that was bad. Amen. People can't seem to blame anybody else. People seem to blame everybody else but themselves. Amen? Amen. And a lot of times they get convicted of their sin, and they get convicted about what they've done, and they never want to go back to church again. Now, I'm not saying that's all the time, but there's a lot of that. Amen? I want to tell you something. Jonah was miserable because he hated the Assyrians. Oh, he done what God told him to. Oh, I guess I'll have to go serve in that nursery. Stinking kids. Well, I guess I'll have to get in judgment house. Everybody else is. Amen. Man, that thing's work. You get this bad attitude. I know it don't happen here, but I guess I got to go to Sunday school. They're going to shame me into it until I go. It's never your fault, though, is it? It's never on you. It's always on somebody else, ain't it? You ever thought about that? Amen. 
You ever thought there might be something wrong with your heart? There was something wrong with Jonah's heart. He didn't like nothing about this ministry. Nothing. Matter of fact, there's only one thing that he lacked. He liked. That's when God created a gourd for him to have some shade. He liked that. It's the only thing he liked out of this whole book. Well, we don't need very many Jonas in church today, do we? But I want you to see the fourth and final thing, the final thing today. Anger and hate towards people, God will deal with his people on that. He will. Now, if he don't deal with you, you might be, may not be his people. But he's going to deal with his people. In, verse, in chapter 4 and verse 1, but it displeased Jonah. He was unhappy exceedingly, and he was very angry. How unhappy are you today? How angry are you today? I mean, the fields are white with harvest. There's people going to bed tonight contemplating suicide. They need, you've got what they need. It's called the gospel. But you don't want to present the gospel. You know what? The power of our testimony is sufficient. When you tell people what, what God's done for you in your life, that's the power of a testimony. We saw that last week. The power of a testimony. What did the woman in Samaria say? Come see a man. He told me all I ever did. That's all she said. God used that. What did Jonah say? 40 days. That's about it. God used it. You don't have to be a theologian to be a witness for Christ. You just need to tell people what he's done for you in your life. Unless there's a lot of hate in you, a lot of anger. And he prayed unto the Lord and said, I pray thee, O Lord, was not this my saying when I was yet in the country? Therefore I fled before Tarshish. Now watch, here it is. For I knew that there are gracious and merciful and slow to anger and great kindness and relentless of the evil. Therefore now, O Lord, take, I beseech you, my life from me, for it is better for me to die than it is to live. I love what, I love what the Lord said in verse 4. Do you well be a little angry, Jonah? Go on down, you read all that. Go to verse 9, it says, Do us well to be a little angry, Jonah. Jonah made him a little shelter where he can sit in the daytime. He's sitting up there waiting to see if Nineveh's going to repent. He was hoping they wouldn't repent where God would kill them. And he sat up there. Can you see him sitting up there in a shelter over him? God is God. Throw that sun up there right above him. A vehement east wind came. He didn't have any chapstick, no sunscreen. He was mad again. He, he, he mad. These people have repented. During that time, God opens, a, he, he, he makes a gourd, big old gourd, and it shades him. Only time, I'm, he's happy. One time, one time, one time, he's happy because he, he got something that gave him some relief. Then God sent a worm to eat the gourd. He's angry again. Do you good to be a little angry? I'm talking to you. Again, I've never seen him use Jonah again. I'd rather God use me, hadn't you? You know, when I think about the culture we live in today, I think of how little we love people. There's Jeff and Carol, and they're, I, they're, not, they're probably back there in the back. I remember when their 
child was stillborn. He said we He said when our child was born they filled out a birth certificate and then turned around and filled out a death certificate. He said that was a hard time in our life. This little this little gal showed up at their house with a casserole. Knocked on the door, said, I'm from Trace Creek, and told her name. And a lot of you would know her name. I'm, some of her kin folks are here today. And she said, I'm from Trace Creek, and we're praying for you. And she just handed them, here's a, she handed them a casserole. That casserole, from that casserole, showed how much the people they showed Jeff and Carolyn how much love it came from that lady Amen. and it started making a difference in their life spiritually Amen. and and God's done a work in that family Amen. all from a casserole because the little lady had love in her heart Amen. I could use casserole day no I can't <laughs> that's a joke but you know what? There's a lot of people need a casserole. Amen. Amen. They're hurting. Yes. You know, they've been through some hard things. But we're too busy riding our Polaris's and we're too busy going to Turkey Bay and we're too busy working to look up and see that somebody has a need. Amen. You know, when you lose a, when you have a miscarriage, and you just need somebody that's been through that just to kind of give you an encouraging word. Amen. If you're too busy trying to make a living to make a life, and you can't see that these people need a little help. You know, we're missing it. I want, I'd rather us be full of love and be the church is be a church full of money. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? Amen. And and Jonah didn't see jo Jonah just wanted them dead. Jesus wanted them saved. Amen. You know we need to figure out what side we're on. I know what side I'm on. Y'all ever get angry when you watch the news? I do. Then I got to repent. I said, Lord, I, if I lived there, I'd probably feel the same way. So forgive me. And we got the power of the gospel in our hand. I can tell you what politicians need today. There's a lot of Christian politicians, but they don't have the microphone. Amen. But the Christians can be praying for them that they get that microphone. We got to start praying for our people in authority. Amen. Amen. We need to pray for each other. We need to pray and ask God to forgive us Amen. for being angry and being hateful. Because we can't win nobody to Christ that way. Amen. Amen. We're going to have a time of invitation. If God's dealing with you today about being saved, I just, I want you to just. There's people going to come and pray today, probably about something I didn't even preach on, but they're going to pray because they got burdens, and people are going to pray with them. But while they're doing that, if God's dealing with you about being saved, or maybe you got some issues in your life that you need somebody to help you resolve, just come down front and just, Brother Keith, I just, I need, I need some help, and we'll get you the help you need this morning in a private way. But you, whatever the need is this morning, God will meet you where you're at. But you can't be hateful and miserable and ugly to people and win them to Jesus. Amen. We're going to have to be loving. Amen. Amen. Lord, we come to you this morning thanking you for your kindness and goodness. And Lord, that's probably one of the top ten most worst sermons I've ever preached. 